Welcome back to another Game Maker Studio tutorial and this time with bounding boxes. And you're thinking like bounding boxes, step collisions, eh, boring, I don't need that. Well, hold your horses. There are a few things maybe you didn't know. So I will show you that right away. So as you can see, I have uh, well, on the left side my health and once I touch the bounding box of this enemy, and it touches the bounding box of the hero, which is this little guy with the axe. Yeah. Um, well, then health is being subtracted. So as you can see, bam, health has been subtracted quite very fast actually. And you see this enemy, ha, there can be nothing happening because he is above me. And what the fuck, he's subtracting health as well. How can that be? This guy is above me, he's not even touching anything. And that one is a little bonus in the middle of the video. This is one up Indie. I am the developer of the indie game Clunky Source and a programmer slash pixel artist. So if you are new here and you want more, consider subscribing to my channel because I upload every two days a video and for now almost every day. So let's get right into the good stuff. So as you can see, um, Bounding boxes are a little bit tricky and for example if you have having a sprite and you create a new one, well you have your collision mask on the left side here, let's zoom in a little bit and then you have parameters. A lot of times when you create it, it's automatic. Of course you can go full image, then it goes for the full image, but sometimes it's just smaller than the, well, the size of the image and sometimes you can, well, change the bounding box and those points are the bounding box parameters because every bounding box is consisting of four of those points and then they are being used well in something which i show you now so just a little recap we have like those three monsters one is those uh, is that flying thingy here and then once it touches the enemy or well, the the player subtracts some health and quite a lot actually so what can we do to show our bounding box? We can just, just do something like that. And we just draw a rectangle, set it to one, because if you set it to zero, then well, we just do the whole um, space, but we just want the outline, that's why we go for one. If else, it would be zero. And then we need four coordinates. And these are the BB box left, because we need an X position and a Y position as you can see on the bottom left corner and those ones are the points I just showed you of the bounding box and they are quite important for the collision so let's do that for all those other enemies let's uncomment that one and that one as well it's just the same code and let's run it and let's see and well now we see the solution here it's just, well, the whole thingy. And here, that is strange, what's happening here? Well, you have our sprite here and the bounding box is below it. What the hell is happening here? And as you can see on this robot, why is the bounding box like this? This is kind of strange. And it has a very, very simple solution. Let's go back in here and let's go for the first monster. And you can just check out, if you press on this one, you go onto the sprite and then you just go collision mask and then it shows your collision mask. So as you can see, of course you can manually change that if you like. Your bounding box is quite correct. Let's go onto that guy and press on here. Aha! Uh -huh. Where is our collision mask? It is below. Whoopsie! As you can see, the bounding box doesn't even have to be inside. Uh, well, this sprite. Um, size and width and doesn't have to be like inside here so just check out that well that stuff is somewhere there and for example if you want to reset it BAM let's go automatic or full image then we have our original parameters and then we can well adjust it let's go into our third thing that is the special but well game maker guys who have been like long around know what's happening as yes, we, we just go in here and let's see the collision mask hmm looks all right what is the problem here well our collision box is not the same as, as the sprite so for example if 
normally this is the default and you just see something like this same as the sprite so you so the collision box is taking well, the bounding box parameters of the actual sprite which is being used but here we use something like this and then well your collision mask is being assigned something else of course you can edit your mask but this is just editing your um well your sprite here why why would anybody actually do that uh, basically there are a few reasons so for example if you have this little thingy going from left to the right and then maybe there's like a, a box here and once it's hitting the box it turns around and goes to the left side and those collisions can be a little bit tricky because sometimes the sprites are completely changed let's just imagine this robot is firing and he's just going a little bit down and well the sprite is completely different the bounding box is different and then maybe for example if he's there and then he's starting shooting he would maybe clip with the uh, well with the wall here and then he would just get instantly stuck forever and that is something you want to avoid that's why a lot of games just do let's say a custom bounding box which is just like a sprite which is just empty it's something like this but um let's say i don't know 16 by 16 or whatever and then it works and this is what a lot of games uh, do to avoid this clipping between the things so everything stays neat even though maybe the sprite is being changed of this object because it's in another state so this is how you can actually do that kind of stuff hopefully that was entertaining and before i go there's something i wanted to show you and here is something which i did for my patrons so if you look out for a menu system which is actually sounding like yeah that sounds like final fantasy cool um but i made this little uh well, menu system and there you have a, a lot of options and you can customize it to your well, liking and this is based on well a little bit of um, well, Zelda's Breath of the Wild so it feels and looks a little bit similar but it's not the same it's just similar and for example you can change a few things which I just prepared and I don't know maybe you want a gradient in your font or you want a button to have a different color which you see on the bottom uh, right well you can have that and you can customize all those uh, well, fonts the sizes and that thing is quite adaptable so for example if we are having uh, different resolutions let's go and change that one to a, a smaller one bam it already works and adjusts to specific settings that is the thing which i did for my patrons and if you become a patron well you can get it too if not well, completely forget what I said the last, let's say, half minute. And that was it. Have a good one. One up indeed.